Our world divides us, yet we are connected more than ever through technology. Disasters strike and millions are aware within minutes. Action is taken across the world. We are unified. We make change. Something happens, we react. Hello, my name is Steven, and today we are going to be interviewing a volunteer that raised a puppy for guiding eyes for the blind. This organization is located in Yorktown Heights. The people who work there train dogs to help the blind to get around. These people help breed, birth, train, and place dogs to help the blind. This organization has been breeding their own dogs since the mid-1960s. Almost half of the puppies bred each year will become working guide dogs. Now, we will go to an interview with Cat. Thanks for coming, Kat. So how long have you been working with Guiding Eyes for the Blind? I started volunteering with Guiding Eyes in March 2012, um, and I raised two puppies for them. The first one was Payson, and he's a working guide dog now in Long Island. Uh, he goes to college classes every day with his handler. Um, and then the second puppy is Brett, and he decided not to become a guide dog, but we adopted him as a pet. Did you enjoy volunteering for this organization? I really did. Um, I started volunteering with Guiding Eyes when I had first moved to New York, and I didn't know anyone here, so it was a good way for me to make new friends and get involved with the community. Um, I enjoyed learning um, how to train puppies, and I enjoyed going to puppy class and getting to know the other raisers. Um, but for me, the best part was um, having the puppy, and they're just adorable and funny and very smart. What are some of the challenges with raising a Guiding Eyes puppy? Um, one of the hardest things is um, when you're training them, you have to communicate consistently about what you want them to do. Uh, that can be difficult because dogs don't speak English. So um, you have to figure out what is worth it to them to make the good choice. So you're trying to teach the puppy um, to make the right choice. Like when you're walking in the park and the puppy wants to chase a squirrel, it's not a good choice to chase the squirrel because when they're guiding someone, who can't see, it's really important that they don't get distracted and run off after a squirrel. Um, so you have to learn what does the puppy find um, so exciting and so worthwhile that they would rather have that than chase the squirrel. Um, so that can be challenging to figure out, but you get to know your puppy and what they like, and you get to um, talk to your teacher and talk to other raisers who might know some tricks. Um, the other challenging thing um, that everyone always asks about is giving the puppy back at the end of the time that you have them, um, and that can be hard because of course you love the puppy. Um, but it really helps to know that the puppy is going to have just a really exciting and fulfilling life and that they're going to be out there making a difference and it's just good to know that you can be a part of that. So. <coughs> How long does the dog have to be to enter training? Um, so puppy raisers start working with the puppy um, when they're two months old and then they work with them until they're anywhere from 14 to 18 months and then they go back for more formal training um, with professional trainers where they learn um, how to guide a person. Um, so they're about two years old when they become a guide dog. What qualities th does the dog need to have to become a guide dog? Um, so usually guide dogs need to be um, calm and confident in a variety of situations, whether that's just out for a walk on a country road or whether they're in Grand Central Station. So they need to be calm enough um, to get through that environment and not get stressed out by it. Um, they need to have a low distraction level. And then they need to be able to problem solve and make decisions on their own. So if they're walking down the street and there's an obstacle in the way, they have to figure out a safe way around it. Um, and then they also need to be able to um, to settle down for a long period of time. So if their person is at work, then they need to learn to, you know, relax and, and um, be comfortable in that environment as well. Well, thanks, Kat. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about Guiding Eyes. Welcome. Now let's head back to the studio. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can always donate to this organization at www.guidingeyes.com slash donate.